Okay, so I don't even have my video guy. I got bad sound right now. And I don't even know what to do with my hands. It's a terrible angle, but we have breaking news. Google just announced its chat GPT competitor and they're calling it, let me check my notes here, BARD, B-A-R-D. It stands for Apprentice BARD, what's its code name? And it's going to be the Google search AI powered sidekick that is releasing now to select testers and will be rolling out to users across the country in the coming weeks. Their CEO, Sundar Pichai, announced the tool today in a very long and sort of rambling blog post, as is Google's way. So we're gonna go through and break it down. 12 highlights, 12, from Google's announcement of BARD and what it means for you. Let's go through this quickly. Okay, real quick, before we get into the video, if you find this interesting, if you were searching for a video about AI, you're gonna love our newsletter, smokingrobot.ai. Go there, you can browse over 300 of the latest AI apps and tools, and while you're at it, sign up for our newsletter. It's a good read, I think you'll like it. Back to the video. Okay, number one, we reoriented the company around AI six years ago. Okay. Did they really? So what Google is saying here is that six years ago, they became an AI company, sort of. Um, is that true? I don't know. Maybe. Is it true that they're an AI company now? Uh, yeah, uh, against their will, uh, but th they are now. Would they be saying this today in 2023 if it wasn't for the release and success of ChatGPT? No, probably not. But here we are, Google, AI company. Number two. Their mission is to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. So what they're doing here, before they even get to the announcement, is stating their intent as a search company. Universally accessible and useful, organize it. That's all about search. So there's this book called The Innovator's Dilemma, when new technologies cause great firms to fail. What does it mean? It means when tech companies get so big and their business so monstrous that they can't be disrupted, or they, they can be, but they don't want to disrupt themselves. And AI kind of presents that for Google right now because a lot of what it does steps on its crown jewel of search. So by coming out at the beginning here and sort of reaffirming that they're a search company first and foremost, is them digging that flag deeper into the ground saying, listen, this is what we are. We're gonna use AI as part of this. But at the end of the day, this is what we do. Where they can run into problems, where I think they can run into problems here, is AI is so, about so much more than just search and getting information and facts. Certainly that's a big part of it, but it can also create text, video, images. It can help you sort through documents, help you sort through spreadsheets, generate so much more stuff that we don't even know about yet, that search is gonna become just a real small component of that. But here's Google saying, hey, we have this search business, we can't disrupt it, so we're gonna use AI and introduce AI right alongside search, let's go. Okay, number three, the scale of the largest AI computations is doubling every six months, far outpacing Moore's law. So for those of you who don't know, Moore's law basically says that computing power doubles every two years computer chips, you know, so on and so forth. And that's largely held true since like the 1970s, since around when he said it, don't quote me on the year, but it's been like 40, 50 years. What Google is saying here is that the pace of AI innovation and development and power is doubling every six months. So think about where we are today, early February. That means we're gonna, whatever we have today is gonna double, double in ability by like winter in the Northern hemisphere. That's kind of scary, promising, but scary. Okay, number four, quote, so this is Google talking about um, what their chat tool, their AI tool, Bard, will throw off. And they say, quote, fresh, high-quality responses, and you can learn about the best strikers in football right now. So what is this? This is a direct shot at ChatGPT, which is trained on data only through the end of 2021. So if you ask it anything that happened in the last 14 months or so, it's not going to know. It still bows to Her Majesty, the Queen of England, rest in peace, respect, but she's dead, right? And it doesn't know that. What Google's saying is Bard, it's got all the up-to-date information. So they have that advantage, but it might be really short-lived. I'm recording this on a Monday night. 
And by Tuesday or Wednesday, Bing is going to announce and release ChatGPT4, the newest version of ChatGPT. And it sounds and looks, based on leaks, like it's going to include up-to-date info. So uh, point Google for like a day, maybe. By the time you're watching this, it might not even be an advantage anymore. Okay, number five. All right, so they call it experimental. Not beta, not alpha, experimental. Why are they doing that? Well, it, it probably is experimental. Also seems very reactionary. No way they would be putting this out there if not for OpenAI and Microsoft's release of ChatGPT a couple of months ago. But also when it gets something grotesquely wrong or gives off a fact that's horribly and uh, you know pisses off some subgroup somewhere, they can say, hey, it's an experiment, don't quote us. Okay, number six is, quote, a lightweight model version of Lambda, which is their language processing tool. This much smaller model requires significantly less computing power, enabling us to scale to more users, allowing for more feedback. Okay, so they're doing this for one of two reasons. One, they've preached caution in releasing AI. And hey, we have something more powerful, but we're not going to put it out to the world yet because, you know, they're not ready for it. Or two, maybe the tool's not that good and they could just say, hey, it sucks, but it's experimental and we got something better coming. I don't know, pick your poison. I'm a cynic, but they're saying this is like just the, you know, the JV version of what they really have. When they release that, who knows? Number seven. So their tool meets a quote, high bar for quality, safety, and groundedness in real world innovation. So again, I think this is a shot at ChatGPT. OpenAI has released this technology, and I don't want to say they're reckless, but they kind of put it out into the world without warning or like, here, uh, you know, good luck, students, good luck, teachers, good luck, whomever. Google is sort of taking this torch of caution and understanding the implications on the world. And the way Apple does with privacy, where they talk about, hey, our customers' privacy is the utmost important to us, which I actually think is true. Google's doing that with caution and AI. So that's why they're saying this. Do they mean it? Yeah, probably. Are they a little behind? Also, yeah, probably. Okay, number eight. We're working to bring language, image, and music AI advancements into our products, starting with search. So all this means is that they have other tools, and they've sort of put out white paper about these, where there's a tool where you can edit a video with text. So you see a rabbit crossing a field of grass, you can change that with text to say, make this a donkey on the sand. And in real time, it will do that, preserve the background, preserve the rest of the image, but change the subject, change what it's doing, change what it's walking on. That's one tool. They also have a text to music generator that they showed off a few weeks ago. So what they've done in response to Microsoft and OpenAI is really put out like, look at all of our tech, look what we're doing in music and image and video, and now in search. But BARD, the search tool, is the first thing they're actually said they're gonna release. The rest is like experimental, we're working on this. At the end of the day, it's coming. Um, they're starting with search. We're gonna, number nine, we're gonna issue safe and scalable APIs for developers. So think about it this way. Chat GPT gets all the pub, but OpenAI, the company behind it, their real advantage might be that they have an API, which is basically just a set of instructions so developers can build on top of chat GPT. Here's an example of that. When you go to an internet site today, it's largely sitting on Amazon servers. Like 50% of the internet lives on Amazon servers and Amazon makes tons of money from this. You would never know, you go to ESPN, you don't know that site is hosted on Amazon servers, but it probably is in many other popular sites. Many of the popular AI apps and tools now that are coming are built on top of OpenAI's platform that powers ChatGPT. And that might be where they make their money in the long term. So what Google is saying here is like, hey, we're gonna do that too, but we're gonna be like a bit more cautious about it. And again, maybe they're not ready, but like we're gonna do it slowly with developers we trust and we're gonna bring them in slowly and see what they come up with. In other words, they don't want some developer to take their tech and I don't know, like hack all the nuclear plants in the world with it. They really want, I'm not saying that's possible today, but you know, they really want to be measured about what they give to developers to build on this tech. So um, take for that what you will. All right, number 10. Bring experiences rooted in these models to the world in a bold and responsible way. 
All right, you know what? I'm not even gonna touch this one. The PR guy had too much fun. Bold and responsible. Those things don't go together. Either you're bold or you're irresponsible. I'm or responsible. I don't know. This is stupid. Move on. Right, number 11, Google says they found people turning to them for quick factual answers. For example, how many keys does a piano have? But increasingly, people are now turning to them for deeper insights and understanding about how you sign up for, play piano, take piano lessons. What they're really saying here is, is that people used to just go and search for facts, but now they want context, they want nuance, they want deeper answers, i.e. the sort of stuff that ChatGPT throws back at you, and they're gonna do that. What this really sounds like though is Google snippets. You know, a lot of time if you search for something, you don't even need to click a result. You just kind of get the answer in a little box there at the top. Well, guess what? Publishers hate that because that answer came from some website that was trying to get you to click on their link and visit their website. And instead, Google just scraped it, took the answer and threw it to the top of search results. Well, it sounds like they're gonna do that now, but like BART is gonna be snippets on steroids and they're gonna give you long, in-depth, detailed, step-by-step -step responses above the search results on the page. So this opens up an interesting question. What happens to all those publishers? You thought people were mad when some of these image services and chat GPT was collecting data and giving people answers and no one knows like where they got the data from. Artists are pissed about this. Some companies are, uh, some artists are suing some of these companies. How many internet publishers do you think are gonna be really mad when Google takes the content that these people created that is meant to live on a search engine to send traffic to their site and they just sort of remix it and throw it at the top of the search results and nobody clicks on anything. That's a fight to watch out for and it's gonna happen the minute this tool is released. I promise you. And number 12, soon you'll see AI powered features in search that distill complex information and multiple perspectives into easy digest formats. So, uh, yeah, you can see from the screenshot here that it's basically uh, snippets on steroids. That sounds about right. Okay, so those are 12 takeaways from Google's announcement of BARD, their new AI-powered search tool. They said it's coming in the coming weeks to normal people, testers, whoever the hell that is, are going to get that today, tomorrow, whenever they already have it, who knows. But at some point, this is getting rolled out this month, and you're going to see it when you go to Google. And this has the potential to change the online world, and if not, the world beyond that, if it's good. I am sort of dubious that it's as impressive as ChatGPT. So many of the examples Google showed were really rooted in search, people looking for facts, information, and guides. And so much of the way people use ChatGPT is really to output things, like content, like, like scripts for a video like this. I didn't, but like you could, right? And I think Google is leaning on that people are searching for answers and facts portion, and ChatGPT does so much more. So if Bard does that, we got a game changer. Otherwise, I think this thing is gonna be a bit maligned. Either way, it's gonna be heavily scrutinized. Google's holding an event Wednesday, February 8th to officially announce it, so we'll probably learn more details then. But those are 12 takeaways from the uh, press release that I thought you would like. If you found this interesting, do me a favor. We got a lot of comments and likes on our last couple of videos. Leave a comment, subscribe to this channel. We got more AI news, breaking it down for you in a way that people understand. I promise you our production quality will get better. We just moved into a new location here. So give us a beat to get that right. Also go to smokingrobot.ai and subscribe to our newsletter. We send it three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, breaking down the latest news in AI, fun, entertaining, informative, and irreverent. I think you'll like it. We're getting a lot of subscribers from our YouTube channel. So hit a like, give us a subscribe here, smokingrobot.ai, subscribe to our newsletter, and thanks for watching.